In the previous videos, we have discussed about series grouping and parallel grouping of cells. But here we would like to talk about mixed grouping. That means we connect them both in series as well as parallel. Let me show you how it is being done. Identical cells were taken, each one having an EMF E, internal resistance R. They are all connected in series like that. There are n number of the cells that are all connected in series. This is series grouping. We have learned it. Now, a similar set is taken. That means internal resistance R, EMF E, N cells. That set is connected in parallel to the previous set. Like this. There are M rows. There are M rows. Connected like this. Not M, M. That means what like this. 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. M. Again this is series grouping. N cells. This kind of connection is called as mixed grouping and all this combination is further connected to a external resistance this is called mixed grouping and this is the point we would like to discuss right now so first of all let me try to find out what is the current in this circuit for that we need to know what the total emf in the circuit is total emf in the circuit is this is of cell e E, E and so on there in series, there are n number of the cells, total in series, that is NE. So this will have an EMF NE, this will also have an EMF NE, like that there are M rows, each one having an EMF NE, but they are all in parallel. You know in parallel EMF doesn't add up and stands like the same value. So the total EMF is total EMF in series that is equal to NE itself. Now we would like to write what is total resistances. This is uh, R. This R is in series. There are N cells like this. So the total series resistance is NR. This part will have a resistance NR. This part will have a resistance NR. Like that there are N rows each having a resistance and R. So the total resistance is total internal resistance plus external resistance. What is the total internal resistance is? Each row has a resistance of NR, NR and NR they are all in parallel. In parallel each row has a resistance NR and R and there are M rows which are in parallel. So in parallel effective resistance decreases. So that is equal to NR by M by external resistance R as given. So that will be the total external resistance given for you. So if you simplify this, M is an LCM, NR plus MR by M. That's the total resistance. I know the total EMF, I know the total resistance. Now I can calculate the total current. Total EMF by total resistance. EMF is total EMF is uh, NE. Total resistance is this value. NR, M capital R by capital M. So N, M and E by N small r, M capital R is the total current in the circuit right this is the maximum current that's the total current we can get in a mixed grouping of cells now let us switch over to the next point next thing that i would like to calculate how can i get maximum current or when i can get maximum current when i get maximum current when this i becomes maximum under what condition is the question that we would like to discuss now. Let me switch over all together to the next page. So you need to remember this before I go to the next page. Total current is N into M into E by 
n into small r m into capital r so that current to become maximum that's the condition is the point that i would like to discuss yeah for i to be maximum for that i to be maximum the denominator of that equation has to be minimum denominator of that equation has to be minimum that is what i is equal to e by what's the denominator nr and mr by nm so if you rearrange the terms e by r by capital small r by capital m i am cancelling this nm with m r by capital n that's the denominator this denominator has to be minimum so denominator is minimum means what r by m plus r by n has to be minimum it has to be minimum means differentiation of that has to be zero now you may get a question like shall i differentiate with respect to m or n you can do both right or you can do any of them any of that shall be fine because that m and n are variables through which you are going to get a maximum current you can do any of that and just for example let us uh, consider that uh, we would like to do basing on n so far i would like i can, I can do with respect to m also but i am doing with respect to n right so for i to be maximum d by dn of capital r by n r by m has to be zero that's the condition right so when we are doing with respect to n here m is also a variable and we shall avoid that variable because it has to be done for the differentiation so let me assume something like let imagine something like capital n as m into n where n is a constant i can write now this as i will replace this n at the, at the later stage so in the place of m i can write capital n by small n in this place so i can simplify the equation with the differentiation in a much more easier way let's do that that means i am writing this equation now d by dn of small n is fine because i am differentiating with respect to that small m i have to change in terms of small n that's i will write n by n has to be equal to zero then d by dn of r by n plus small r into small n by capital n that's equal to zero that's what we are now trying to do now let's differentiate it capital r is a constant of course small r is also constant small n is a variable so differentiation of r by n means r d by dn of 1 by n that is n power minus 1 plus d by dn of rn by n has to be equal to 0 i have just divided the differentiation r differentiation of x power n is n into x power n minus 1 that's minus 1 into x power minus 1 and minus 1 plus d by dn of n is equal to 1 that becomes automatically r by n that's equal to 0 so what will be the equivalent of that now let me try to continue this equation i'm just going to continue this minus r n power minus 1 and minus 1 is minus 2 plus r by n is equal to 0 let's take the minus term to the other side let's take the minus one to the other side then r n power minus 2 is r by n right so capital r by n square equal to small r by n but this n is not actually our term n is actually mn i have just 
uh, capsule it for the sake of convenience. So let's simplify this. We substitute that value r by n square is r in the place of this n. I will write the actual value m into n. So on n can be cancelled. R by n equal to small r by m. That implies what we can write is further capital R is equal to yeah. So if you rearrange these terms, what we can get is capital R is get this n into the numerator of the other side by m. If that is the condition, I will get the maximum current. So for I it will be maximum external resistance is R into N by M. So I want you to check one thing, right? Let's go back a little. What is this R N by M? I want you to check. Yes. See this one. See this term. Yes. That's the total internal resistance of a circuit, right? Because there is a cell R, R, there are N cells like that. So the total internal resistance is NR for each column. There are M columns like that. So NR by M is actually the total internal resistance. So when I can get a maximum current, simply when internal resistance of the circuit, when internal resistance of the circuit is equal to external resistance you get the i maximum actually we have done this in the other way using a maximum power theorem in the other video i can directly use that also for i for the power to be maximum if the power is maximum it's obvious that the i is also maximum when internal resistance is equal to the external resistance this is how we can solve this beautiful problem thank you for watching